Okay, it's 9.30. It's time to call to order the Board of County Commissioners. It's February 1st, first day of February. Is it Groundhog Day? I think it is. Let's have a roll call. Commissioner Bernard. Here. Commissioner Ker Here. Kerner. Commissioner Marino. Here. Commissioner McKinley. Here. Commissioner Sachs. Here. Mayor Weinroth. Here. Vice Mayor Weiss. Here. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Bernard, would you please do the invocation and the pledge? Everybody please rise. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mother and father of the world, we pray for the whole human family. Many nations are torn by war. Grant them peace and healing of their, of their divisions. Many communities are filled with crime. Grant them deliverance from fear and the hope of renewal. Many families are divided by hate. Grant them unity, unity and the blessings of love. Many children are abandoned and afraid. Grant them someone who loves them and the promise of a future. Amen. Thank you, Commissioner Bernard. County Administrator, do we have any additions, deletions, or substitutions to the agenda? Mayor, we have two uh, additions on page 33, 4D, and add on a uh, certificate of recognition presented to Julius and Camelia Bunch, uh, District 7, and on page 33, item 4E, and add on a uh, proclamation declaring February 20th through the 26th, 2022, as National Engineers Week in Palm Beach County by District 4. Thank you, County Administrator. Do I have a motion to adopt? I have a motion by uh, Commissioner Kerner, seconded by Vice Mayor Weiss. All in favor? All opposed? The agenda has been approved 7 to 0. We're going to move on to our consent agenda. Uh, we do have one comment card on the consent agenda. Is anybody up here who would like to pull an item off? Seeing nobody run to the uh, button, I'm going to call for uh, the Lindy Harvey to uh, come and uh, you have three minutes. Uh, Ms. Harvey is going to be speaking on item 3EE1. Good morning, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Commissioners. My name is Lindy Harvey. I am the Executive Director of the Spirit of Giving. And I would like to thank you for your continued support of our annual Back to School PBC. We are honored to be a part of this wonderful collaborative that helps thousands of deserving children in our county receive the tools they need to succeed at the start of the new year. This collaborative that is administered by the Office of Community Revitalization with Houston Tate and Ruth Mogolinski is a truly a joint effort of fundraising, community partners all working together to help our county's children. We could not achieve this immense effort without this, your support, the Office of Community Revitalization, Spirit of Givings, Children's Service Council, and the Palm Beach Sheriff's Office. Our collaborative partners provide many resources to this county-wide effort, including funds, staff, volunteers, resources, and ex event expertise. And we are grateful for each one of them, and we are grateful for your support in this amazing program. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harvey, and certainly we thank uh, Spirit of Giving for everything you do, both here and during the Boca Raton Bowl and getting all those children to see that game for free. And uh, we are a very giving community, and we know that uh, Spirit of Giving is just one of those organizations. Thank you for coming. I see Ms. Zook behind you, and thank you both for coming on up here to join us today. Thank you. Okay, I uh, see no further uh, comment cards. Does anybody want to move the consent agenda? I have a motion by Vice Mayor Weiss. I have a second by Commissioner Kerner. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor, all opposed. Show that has been approved, 7-0. Okay, it's time for special presentations, and we have five proclamations. We're starting to get back to our normal routine. So we will start with uh, Commissioner Bernard. And again, I'm gonna ask the recipients, we encourage you to uh, make a comment after the, the uh, proclamation is delivered, but please keep your comments to three minutes.
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, today's a special day in Palm Beach County, and I get the chance to uh, proclaim today as Journey Nelson Day in Palm Beach County. And uh, after I'm done reading the proclamation, uh, Mr. Mayor, I wouldn't mind if the whole commission would come down to take a picture with Ms. Nelson and her family. This proclamation declaring February 1st, 2022 as Journey Nelson Day. Whereas on November 2nd, 2021, Danielle Mobley and her nine-year-old daughter, Journey Nelson, went grocery shopping in West Palm Beach. And whereas Danielle was putting their groceries in the car, a would-be thief tried to take her purse. And whereas there was a scuffle between her and the man attempting to rob her, and she was knocked to the ground. And whereas Journey rushed out of the car, ran towards her mother and started hitting the man. And whereas Germany was also knocked to the ground, the suspect dropped the bag and started to flee. And whereas Journey got up and chased him down the street. And whereas surveillance footage also shows that bystanders helped the mother and daughter during the incident. And whereas two days later, the suspect was arrested and charged with robbery and battery. And whereas as a result of defending her mother, Journey received a great deal of positive press coverage on CNN, the Nick Cannon Show, Fox News, and other national and local news outlets. And whereas Journey's quick and courageous actions took the assailant by surprise and helped bring about a positive resolution to the incident. Now therefore be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Palm Beach County, Florida assembled in regular session this first day of February 2022, that today, February, 20, February 1st, 2022, in Palm Beach County is hereby proclaimed Journey Nelson Day. We just want to thank the city commissioners for recognizing Journey for her bravery. Um, even though this has been a long, tough uh, journey, we still have a long way to go, but it's the positive reinforcement, the positive love and support from the community um, that's helping us get through. So we just, we appreciate all the love and support that the community has given us through this. Thank you.
Okay, our second uh, proclamation is going to be delivered by uh, Commissioner Marino. Good morning, all. Ah, thank you for being here. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Oh, my God. This is, can you all hear me? Here we go. So, 211, if you haven't called 211, thank God. Um, but if you have, they are a very special agency here, and we have a proclamation today declaring February 11th through 17th, 2022, as 211 Awareness Week. Whereas 211 Helpline is entering its sixth decade of quality and caring service to the community, and whereas 211 Helpline has responded to more than 3 million people from all walks of life providing needed guidance and support, whereas the primary needs expressed by people calling 211 are related to mental and emotional health, addiction, housing and utilities, food insecurity, and health concerns. And whereas 211's caring staff continue to serve as a beacon of hope, providing crisis support and resources 24 hours a day for those who are overwhelmed and do not know where to turn. And whereas 211 has specialized advocacy and support programs that include the Caregiver Support Project, the Special Needs Helpline, Elder Crisis Outreach, and the Help Me Grow program that provides early intervention, excuse me, intervention in children's development delays. Whereas 211's life saving sunshine daily telephone reassurance calls continue to brighten the lives of isolated local seniors and has expanded to include caregivers. And whereas 211's My Florida Veterans program provides peer to peer support and helps veterans readjust by providing links to service for them and their families. And whereas 211's services include providing referrals for mental health counseling, substance abuse treatment, healthcare employment, food assistance, daycare support groups, volunteering, and VITA free income tax preparation. Now therefore be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners 211 Awareness Week. And we have with us President and CEO Sharon LaRue. May I say a few words? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Commissioner Marino, for those lovely comments. Thank you commissioners on the dais, mayor, county staff, for the recognition of our work as well as for helping to increase the awareness that when in fact people are struggling or overwhelmed and not sure where to turn, they can turn to the caring team at 211 24-7. We know that this pandemic has really um, taken a toll on all of us. We know that people are tired and that nerves are frayed and that when they don't get the support that they need, sometimes we do see tragedies play mm -hmm. out as we've seen in the news of recent um, losses by suicide, such as that of former Miss USA, Chelsea Christ over the weekend, heartbreaking. And it is a reminder for us to tell the people that in our lives that we care about them. And it's also a reminder, I think, that um, no one's life is picture perfect the way that we imagine it is from movies and from social media. That we need to know that life is, um, does have, life does have struggles and worries and grief, but at the same time, every day, brings a new opportunity for love and connection and hope and healing. So again, for those looking for that healing, please do reach out. I know that sometimes saying call a number like 211 may sound a little bit indifferent, but the reality is these are people who are your neighbors, mm -hmm. and these are many people who have chosen to do this work because they've struggled themselves. So if you call, you'll, you'll get a caring voice. And in addition to the mental health um, challenges that we can help with, we have a directory of all the services in the region. So whether it's a, a breakup or a health issue or paying your light bill, we are here for you. So in closing, again, just thank you so much for your ongoing support and um, recognition of our vital work. I would love to take a picture. Would Mr. Julius and Camille Bunch and their daughter, Kimberly Weston Mayhew, please come forward?
not only do we get to celebrate Journey Nelson Day in Palm Beach County, but we also get the chance to recognize uh, a mother and a father in our community, uh, Mr. Julius and Camille Bunch. Uh, as a previous small business owner, I know firsthand that owning a small business is difficult and it's hard. And today we get to congratulate them on having their business being open in Palm Beach County for over 30 years. Uh, this certificate of recognition presented to Julius and Camille Bunch for countless hours of contributing to the community. They have owned and operated, successfully operated Camille's Flowers and Gifts in West Palm Beach for 30 years, where their hiring practices included training and promoting candidates with various life challenges who may have otherwise been excluded from obtaining job opportunities and advancement. They've also expended their family through fostering and adoption. Mr. Julius Bunch, a retired school district of Palm Beach County educator, is a United States Army veteran, member of Phi, Phi Beta Sigma, and served as the Payne Chapel AME School Sunday Superintendent for more than a decade. For several years, he has been a member of the Payne Chapel Steward Board and the Protective and benevolent order of the Elks and still continues to serve in, the, in these roles. Mrs. Camille Bunch is a, registered, is a retired registered nurse and Sunday school teacher. And as a member of the Jamaicans of the Palm Beaches, she helped create and organize an annual health fair serving thousands of county children with back to school physicals and school supplies over the years. This certificate of recognition is presented on this first day of February 2022 by the Palm Beach County Board of County Commissioners. Congratulations. On behalf of Camille's Flowers and Gifts, my wife being the CEO, I'd like to thank the Board of County Commissioners for this honor. Um, like he said, um, I stopped counting retirement and I stopped counting the years that we have been, but thank you again for this honor. To the, to the Palm Beach County Board of Commissioners, I'm indeed very honored to be invited here this morning and for considering me deserving of this certificate. Over the years, as a young, as a child growing up in Jamaica, West Indies, we did not have much, but whatever we have, we shared. And what I did know and do know is everybody or most people need a helping hand in life and with that understanding at a young age i realized that if you give you receive and you often receive more than what you give so again i'm really honored and grateful to be considered for this certificate thank you again sorry i must appreciate my friends and family coming here today to support me. Thank you very much, and we love you.
Jeez, Commissioner Bernard, you're a tough one to follow this week. <laughs> but at least I'm following one that is uh, most appropriate, given that you've really shown the heart of our community. So it's my honor right now to declare February 2022 as American Heart Association Month. Um, so at this time, uh, the American Heart Association will be holding their 2022 Heart Ball on F April 14th. They're, they have four co-chairs this year, Marty Latour and George Elmore, and Michelle and Robert Jacobs are the co-chairs of that event this year. And today I'm happy to have Marty Latour come join me at the podium, as well as Kayla Fox, who's the executive director of the local American Heart Association. And we are all here wearing red today in honor of that. I think uh, Miss Baker might think we're wearing red in honor of her sorority, but we'll take that too. So whereas cardiovascular diseases rank as America's number one killer, and the diagnosis of heart disease presents a greater challenge in women than in men, whereas minority women face the highest risk of death from heart disease and stroke, and whereas improved eating habits can help reduce the risk for a heart attack, and whereas the American Heart Association sponsors National Wear Red Day on February 4th, we're a little early, so we'll have to do it twice this month, to raise awareness in the fight against heart disease in women. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Palm Beach County, Florida, assembled today, that February 22 in our county is hereby proclaimed American Heart Association Month. And um, I would like to uh, also honor a friend of mine who just had turned 50 years old and died of a heart attack. So if we think it can't happen at my age, uh, we need to have second thoughts about that, make sure we're taking care of ourselves. So thank you for everything that you do to raise awareness in the community. If you'd like to say a few words. Thank you, Commissioner McKinley. Really appreciate it. Um, you probably might wonder why I'm up here. I, I was wondering at first, um, but I am the chair of the American um, Heart Ball this year, but I'm also the chair of the Palm Beach County Food Bank. And I'm very proud that what we've accomplished this year is to partner the missions of the American Heart Association uh, with the mission of the food bank. The food bank is to, for food insecurity, and uh, one of the missions of the Heart Association is for nutrition. And this year we've combined our efforts for nutrition security in Palm Beach County. And it's not just for this year, it's gonna be a sustaining effort, so I'm very proud of that. Just on behalf of the American Heart Association, I wanna thank Commissioner McKinley, the mayor, vice mayor, and the rest of the commission for uh, proclaiming February Heart Month. And as Commissioner McKinley said, we do encourage you to wear red on Friday, National Wear Red Day. It just helps promote that awareness piece to Marty's point, you know, um, nutrition security, getting out there, having that extra walk, encouraging people to go to the doctor. That's what February is about, raising that awareness in our community around those easy key things that we can all do to prevent something like Commissioner McKinley shared earlier. Thank you all. glad I wore my red tie. Um, okay, we have one more proclamation, and this is for our unsung heroes, the engineers in our county. And we have uh, our county engineer, uh, Mr. Ricks. Would you like to introduce the uh, people that you brought up? I have Dr. Keith, Director of Performance Management. I have Ismi, Director of uh, Facility Director Development Operations, and also uh, Director of Water Utilities, Ali Bayat. Terrific. Okay, I'm going to read this declaration. And again, as I say, after Surfside, we understand the importance of engineers to keep us safe. Whereas National Engineers Week was established in 1951 to help increase public understanding of engineering profession 
and to recognize those who professionally protect the public health, safety, and welfare. And whereas, engineers use their scientific knowledge and technical skills in creative ways to fulfill society's needs, and whereas, engineers face major technological challenges from rebuilding towns devastated by natural disasters to designing an information superhighway that will speed our country through the 21st century. And whereas engineers encourage our youth, math, and science students to realize the practical power of their knowledge. And whereas we will be looking to engineers more than ever for their knowledge and skills to meet the challenges of the future. And whereas we applaud the engineers working in Palm Beach County for the significant contributions they make to enhance our local quality of life. And whereas Palm Beach County Board of County Commissioners recognizes the value of having engineers on staff by offering approximately 100 positions that utilize an engineering degree, spanning departments such as engineering and public works, water utilities, planning, zoning, and building, fire rescue, information system services, facilities development, operations, environmental resource management, airports, housing, and economic development, parks and recreation, and county administration. That's quite a bit. <laughs> now therefore be it proclaimed by the Board of County Commissioners of Palm Beach County, assembled in regular session today, that we hereby proclaim this to be National Engineers Week, and that's going to be February 20th to 26th. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Weinross, Vice Mayor Weiss, Board of County Commissioners, County Administrator Baker for this proclamation. On behalf of myself, as the County Engineer, Ali Bayat, this is me, uh, and uh, Dr. Keith, we are representing basically those hundred professionals that work for Palm Beach County. The theme this year is reimagining the possible. Engineering Week is an opportunity to demonstrate the importance of engineering in our lives. We need more young people to look at engineering as a potential career. We have so many future challenges to solve. We're always looking for opportunities to expose young people to engineering. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, that ends our special presentations for the day, and now we move on to the, the regular agenda. First item on the regular agenda is my favorite item, airports. And I think, uh, Laura Beebe, I see you're here, but hopefully we don't need to have you make a presentation. Just to let our viewers know that pursuant to changes in Chapter 332, we have to approve purchases over $325,000. This item happens to be $343,000. I will entertain a motion to approve. I have a motion by Commissioner Marino, seconded by Vice Mayor Weiss. All in favor, all opposed, you have a seven to zero. Thank you for stopping up and see us. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right, our next item on the agenda is the library, item 5B1. Mr. Mayor, I'll go ahead and move approval of item 5B1. We have a motion by Commissioner McKinley, seconded by Vice Mayor Weiss. This is to purge expired library accounts and uncollectible items. And I'm going to see no need for any more discussion. All in favor, all opposed. You have won this item seven to zero. You can now go home. You got two items. <laughs> 
Yes, we did. Now we're going to we're going to waive uh, over a million dollars. I'll go ahead and approve item our move for approval item 5B2 and um, I just want to apologize to former commissioner C. Bay Rooms. I forgot to bring my library card downstairs with me, but it is upstairs. I have a second by Vice Mayor Weiss and again this is to uh, basically clean up a, a, a lot of items that have been on there since 2016. Okay, very good. Uh, I have um, motion and second. All in favor? All opposed? We have seven to zero. Waived all those fines. Now we're going to recess as the Board of County Commissioners. We're going to reconvene or convene now as the Child Care Facilities Board so that we can uh, take a look at a uh, motion to uh, approve a nominee. Mayor, I'd like to move approval of item 6A1 to approve Claudette Riffenberg onto the uh, Child Care Advisory Council. I have a second by uh, Commissioner Kerner. Uh, seeing no further discussion, all in favor, say, uh, all in favor, all opposed, uh, seven to zero. The shorter the agenda, the more difficult to get through. Okay, we're gonna adjourn as the Child Care Facilities Board and reconvene as the Board of County Commissioners and most of our business is behind us. So now we're gonna move on to commission appointments. And I don't see any on my sheet, so if anybody has one, push your button. Commissioner Kerner, you are recognized. Thank you, Mayor Weinroth. I'd like to make a motion to reappoint Michael Kelly, captain at uh, Boynton Beach Police Department, to the zoning commission. I have a motion by Commissioner Kerner, Vice Mayor uh, Weiss has seconded it. All in favor, all opposed, 7-0. Uh, next, I'm going to recognize Commissioner Marino. Thank you. I have two reappointments. So the first would be Miss uh, Matt. I'd like to reappoint Miss Cherie Pavlik to the Zoning Commission. I have a second by Vice Mayor uh, Weiss. All in favor? All opposed? That's approved. Seven zero. And I would like to reappoint Mr. Chuck Millar to the Land Development Regulation Advisory Board. And again, that's been seconded by Vice Mayor Weiss. All in favor? All opposed? That's approved. Seven zero. Thank you, Commissioner Marino. Commissioner McKinley. Mayor, I'd like to appoint Allie Reitz to the Land Development Regulation Advisory Board. Okay, that's been seconded by Vice Mayor Weiss. All in favor, all opposed. That is approved 7 to 0. Okay, um, it appears that that's all the appointments we have. We're going to move on to staff comments. And I have, I have, I have appointments on. I, your, your light is oh, on, Commissioner Bernard. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to over, <laughs> overlook you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to appoint Alexander Broomfield to the Zoning Commission. I have a second by uh, Commissioner Kerner. All in favor, all opposed. That's approved, seven to zero. And I'd like to appoint uh, Mr. Mohammed Albana to, the, to discover the Palm Beaches. Okay, and again, that's been uh, seconded by Commissioner Kerner. All in favor, all opposed. Let's show that as approved, seven to zero. And is that all the appointments we have? Okay, I think we're good. Let's move on to staff comments. Administrator. I will ask the board to approve the directives that you have. Uh, we've submitted, however, we are in the process of also updating uh, that uh, particular uh, directive and making some modifications. Uh, the board directed us to work toward uh, terminating the exclu exclusive use of the equestrian facility uh, for the Palm Beach County Mounted Posse. We have moved forward with that. We're working with legal uh, and we're looking at the opportunities for others to also lease the facility. So we're working through that process at this point that is ongoing. You also directed us to uh, work on the advisory boards and what they're doing and how we can best tell you. Every board is supposed to place their minutes uh, on those particular boards, but we I will work toward creating a portal so all of that information goes into one area, all of the boards and agencies, and at any time somebody can actually pull up that information. Uh, we will continue uh, with an annual re report to the board and update um, uh, by staff and at that point we can also highlight other things that uh, you may be interested in or uh, that the board may be requesting of the board of county commissioners. I do want to remind us that 
any board working with staff, if there are issues that need to come before the board, staff is uh, empowered to bring those issues to administration and then for us to schedule them if it's necessary to bring it before the Board of County Commissioners. So that portal will be created. Uh, we had a, a very good kickoff for our advocate uh, for legislative uh, session. Uh, this board directed us to uh, advocate for a legislative civics requirement in our 2022 legislative session. That is a part of our priorities and so we will move forward. Um, and we'll give you a more complete report at our next month's meeting. Very good. Um, Commissioner McKinley, you're recognized. Yeah, thank you. Um, and just one comment before I make a motion to receive and file. Uh, I received a call yesterday from one of our colleagues in Alachua County and just uh, this is probably an issue that we'll be bringing up to the executive board of the Florida Association of Counties. But some of the uh, delegation members from Alachua County have filed a local bill that would direct their charter on how they elect their county commissioners and that will be dictated by the state um, if that were to pass and I think that is an extremely dangerous uh, path forward and precedent to set and that's something that um, at some point maybe if I when I have more details next week we can write a letter in support of Alachua County's position that basically this elected or this local bill would make a charter change to the to the Alachua County Charter uh, right now I believe their commissioners are elected at large and this would change their charter to uh, five single member district commissioners and two at large I mean basically writing how they handle their local elected body and uh, their reason is uh, in the name of good governance although several of the counties and the local municipalities within those delegation members districts are not being uh, there are no local bills filed to change the way they do business which is very similar to how Alachua County is doing business right now and uh, the makeup of the Alachua County Commission leans one way in opposition to how the leadership and their delegation who are filing these bills leans and is purely political but it's a horrible precedent and something I think every single county should speak out against in Florida so since you brought uh, our, our delegation I mean our legislative agenda challenges I just wanted to throw that one out there um, for discussion and I'll maybe draft a letter and bring it to the board next week under my comments uh, but with that I'd like to make a motion to receive and file the updated board directive report thank you Commissioner McKinley and uh, you've been seconded by Vice Mayor Weiss uh, certainly home rule seems to be something our friends up in Tallahassee forget as soon as they get up there all in favor of the uh, motion to receive and file all opposed it's approved seven to zero um, Madam Administrator, while we're on your comments, um, I'm hoping that we can make an adjustment on the policy with respect to masks in the building ex expeditiously. I know our friends over at the school board have uh, deemed it at least appropriate to allow staff to make that decision for themselves. And I'm hoping that you will make a uh, review that policy and, and make the necessary changes with all deliberate speed. I am, uh, I have been every week looking at the numbers uh, and discussing them with Dr. Alonzo along with uh, this week. We are on the decline. We do anticipate a significant decline in the next week or so where we are monitoring. We will continue to monitor and I will definitely uh, hear you loud and clear. Um, but I, I think we, we are, we will want to follow uh, the procedures we follow, the science, and looking at the numbers and getting input from uh, our Department of Health. And so I am looking at it. We are still high. We are currently at 19 or 20 percent um, transmission rate. We, it should be below the 10. We like it at five, but I know we won't get there, but we are coming down. And things are definitely improving. We'll be looking at it and make the appropriate adjustment as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Okay, um, that uh, 
is the end of the administrator's comments. I know our county attorney has something she would like to uh, address. Um, I will be bringing back to the board next week some more extensive comments concerning my very favorite attorney in the whole wide world, Mr. Robert Banks, who will not be happy that I am doing this. However, he is a well-established cornerstone of the county who has provided advice and counsel and been a um, unbelievably strong contributor to the legal needs of the county for the last 35 years. So I am going to ask for the board's indulgence next week to bring him in and embarrass him further and <laughs> let him know that we all really do appreciate who he is and all the work that he has done. You've, you've given him warning he may take a sick day. <laughs> Actually, he may. <laughs> Okay. Thank Any, you. Okay, very good. Um, we're going to move on to commissioner's comments, and I'm going to go in uh, reverse order. Commissioner Bernard, you're first. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just want to be quickly, uh, this month we are celebrating Black History Month, and I would like to encourage all of our residents to participate in programming that will be provided by the library system, and I want to thank Mr. Douglas Crane, the library staff, for all of the work that you continue to do for our residents in Palm Beach County. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Commissioner Bernard. Commissioner McKinley. Um, to the official part first, I'd like to request an offsite proclamation recognizing the 100th anniversary of the incorporation of the city of Pahokee. Whoa. Seconded by Vice Mayor Weiss. All in favor, all opposed, 7 0. You have your proc. Thank you. And then just on comments, you know, we, we experienced some uh, pretty cold weather here uh, over the past few days, and I think some of our farmers across Florida took it in the chin pretty good with the freeze. And Ms. Baker, if we could get an update, uh, if it's just an email memo from um, our, you know, from Ron Rice and his division on how that impacted our local farmers, that would be helpful. But if we could just say a prayer for them, that'd be great. Thank yeah, it's you. been a tough week for iguanas also. Commissioner Sachs. They come back to life, though. The tomato doesn't. <laughs> okay, I just am so proud and happy to announce that last night my daughter had a baby. Aww. Mazel tov. It's just such a, such a wonderful feeling to know that um, a little girl was born and raised here in Palm Beach County, is, is, uh, has a second child, and I'm um, just so proud of her. Oh, thank you. Mazel tov, everybody. Thank you. I'm so proud. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Commissioner Kerner, you're up. Uh, thank you, Mayor Weinroth. Um, as, uh, as my colleagues are aware, I, my office published a request to, um, and I hope you can join me in directing staff and administration to bring back, uh, perhaps, most likely, I would think, in a workshop context, uh, valuation and presentation by administration on the general obligation water quality environmental bond. I am aware that there are other um, potential bond initiatives, so maybe it would be efficient to evaluate any other proposed bond, uh, general obligation bonds at the same time, but I'll defer to my colleagues on that. But I would like an opportunity for administration and ERM and uh, supporters in the community to have an opportunity to hear about this potential opportunity and for the board to discuss it and weigh in one way or another. So, Mr. Mayor, that would be my request. And I see no objection from your colleagues. So, uh, Madam Administrator, Maybe we could make that a general request for any bonds that may be being considered at this juncture, whether I know, uh, although Commissioner Bernard hasn't mentioned it, uh, he certainly was interested in a housing bond. And if, if that's uh, still something that's of interest, uh, we should bring that forward at the same time so we can have a discussion. If it is the board, because I'm only aware of the environmental and the housing that bonds that the board spoke about before we got in the height of COVID. So if those are the only two, then staff will come back and uh, we'll, we'll discuss the bonds. Now, are we talking general obligation bonds only that you want to discuss? 
or revenue bonds as well? I would personally like to stay, stay, stay general obligation. I don't know what my colleagues want to say on that. I'm seeing no, all right, uh, Commissioner well, I, McKinley, your light is on. Yeah, thank you. You know, this was an item I brought back when we first started having the conversation about how to handle land in Indian Trail Groves and the acreage. Um, and uh, one of the issues, one of the reasons I pulled back on the request at that time was we were getting ready and have since completed the process of allocating American Rescue Plan Act dollars, significant amounts of them to both housing and to environmental needs. So I think it's important to note that you cannot co-mingle those. You cannot use both resources. You can't use bond revenues with American Rescue Plan Act dollars on the same project. So if staff brings back a presentation, we need to make sure that it's a different set of projects than what we've already requested. And I would also like to ask staff to give special consideration onto the timing of when we would seek those bonds People are getting slammed right now with increased food costs, gas costs, utility insurance, rent, everything else. Um, this would be an increase in property taxes at the end of the day, and that's going to get passed on. So there are definitely merits, and I support the conversation, but just want to ask staff when you make a presentation to us, you give us a few options to look at in terms of timing. Commissioner Marino. I echo um, Commissioner McKinley's concerns, um, and I also wanted to know or bring up the possibility of a transportation surtax. So we really do have three different items, um, and I'll just pass on when I was at a chamber event two months ago and we were talking about housing. Um, I took a poll of the room. I asked them about these three different initiatives and I asked who would support them, and not one single hand in the room went up, and there was a collective gasp. So I just want to caution all of us as we move forward. Um, timing may not be appropriate, especially since we are putting $75 million towards, an envir towards environmental initiatives right now and money towards housing. So uh, we can talk about it, but I'm not sure it's something that our uh, constituents are going to be able to pallet at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Marino. And just to the uh, subject of the TST or the transportation surtax, I mean, that would not be a general obligation bond. That would be potentially coming in behind the IST, which is due to sunset probably in 24 or 25, depending on the revenues coming in. I'm not sure if we want to move that into this conversation, because I think there's a lot more conversation that needs to go on that. So. I personally think we should just stick with the general obligation bonds for the immediate future as far as the conversation and workshop. Commissioner Kerner. Well, thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to join you and, and Commissioner McKinley in um, trying to narrow the issues to general obligation bonds. Um, you know, those are the types of bonds that the board needs to vote on before the voters have a chance to vote on it. and. Um, I appreciate Commissioner McKinley's comments that there are some very difficult times both presently and in the future with regards to finances and economic sustainability and affordable housing. Um, but I want the board to have an opportunity to discuss those things within the context and within the frame of mind that they all interact with each other and those that are approved by the board and approved by the voters, um, whether separate issues or one issue alone, um, it's still important for us to see the full picture as we go through this process. So. I appreciate the uh, support by the board and directing staff to accomplish that. Okay, you understand our, our direction then, County Administrator? <laughs> yes, Clear we, as will mud. Not, we will not bring back the transportation surtax discussion. Uh, we are only looking at the environmental and the housing bonds. Um, and I will follow up on what we're prohibited from doing with ARPA, CARES, and, and intermingling those particular bonds. Um, but I do want to echo the fact that we have to expend the 60 million for housing and the, I want to say 70 plus million for um, the environmental uh, by a certain period of time and we're limited on consultants, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna, we'll package all of that and bring that back to the board for your direction. 
Very good. Thank you. All right. Uh, Commissioner Kerner, is that all you have? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Marino, you're up. Thank you. Um, first off, I would like to request an off-site uh, proclamation honoring <laughs> the life of Tim Rosafort. I have a second by Vice Mayor Weiss. All in favor, all opposed, 7-0. Thank you. Um, and you all likely heard the news of the passing of Tim Bird. Um, I want to send my condolences to his family. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but I appeared on his radio program several times. And he, he's just a wonderful personality and a wonderful friend. And um, he did have a voice for radio. <laughs> uh, so I just wanted to recognize him. And um, also went to a retirement celebration uh, in Riviera Beach this past Saturday night for Dan Calloway. And Dan is an 82-year-old who was a civil rights activist, a former ba uh, professional baseball player with the Pittsburgh Pirates, a former deputy with the PBSO, and he spent many, many years in Riviera Beach um, putting together a recreation program and a recreation uh, department, and there is a center named after him, and his contributions to our community are greatly appreciated, and I just wanted to give out another shout out to him. And, la and lastly, under my comments, um, at last Friday's Tri-Rail uh, SFRTA meeting, uh, Steve a Abrams tendered his reg resignation. Uh, we will be in search of a new executive director, and I will keep you posted on that. Thank you, Commissioner, and that's uh, certainly disappointing news, but... Uh well, I mean, there has been a lot of turmoil at Tri-Rail right now. I'm not necessarily sure Steve is the one who should have taken the bulk of the um, arrows, but I, I think he felt it was better this way so that they could move on. They usually go for the top of the food chain. Okay, um, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. A um, couple things. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, seek approval for a proclamation declaring February 13th through 19th, 2022 as the In-Crowd Partnerships Love Your Neighbor Week in Palm Beach County. I have a second by Commissioner Kerner. All in favor, all opposed, 7-0. And then also to share with the board, um, this coming Monday, uh, we are gonna have the uh, first meeting of our local um, technology planning team. This was at the request of the State Office of Broadband, requesting all counties convene these uh, technology planning teams. And it's, we spoke, I spoke uh, to the board about it a couple months ago. We've got a, a very diverse group of folks that have volunteered from all sorts of areas within the county um, to uh, provide some input as to the needs for high-speed broadband and, and to their constituencies. Um, and then the last thing I wanna share, and um, I just, I'm incredibly uh, disappointed. Um, this past weekend in uh, the Orlando area, there were a group of people uh, who wearing Nazi regalia and supporting apparently the values of the Nazi regime uh, made their voices heard. And due to our First Amendment, of course, it, it is an, something that is protected in this country. However, after that occurred, the spokesperson for the governor felt it was appropriate to tweet about this event and try to spread misinformation and blame to other people and other groups. Unfortunately, you have a group of people that have very, I don't even know how to characterize their values, but for somebody related to the governor's office to go out and publicly blame their political opponents because of these misguided and misdirected people is so offensive. And I am sorely disappointed and disappointed that um, the governor has taken no action. So 
uh, as somebody of the Jewish faith whose family was run out of Europe, some of them put into concentration camps, and unfortunately some of them exterminated. This, this is it's just reprehensible. Well, I think we all echo your, your feelings on that, Vice Mayor. Yeah, absolutely. All right, I have a few <laughs> remarks to make, and, and Commissioner Marino, uh, obviously Tim Bird was uh, someone that uh, we've all seen around as a nonprofit uh, uh, events. He's been down in South County innumerable times at uh, Tri-County. Uh, animal rescue, and uh, we certainly aren't going to miss him. Um, we had discussed the general obligations bonds that we're going to ask the county administrator to bring back for discussion. We also had raised at one point in time the idea of the terms of individuals who serve in this body being reviewed and determined whether a, um, a ballot initiative would be in order for a charter revision that would allow for a third term potentially for members of this body. And I'm hoping that you can bring back a report and recommendations with respect to that, either contemporaneous or close thereafter with respect to the, the bond issue, because I'm assuming we'd also be talking about the uh, November election for that uh, question. And that is all I have for today. Um, we are going to recess now, and this board will come back. Yeah, obviously. I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Commissioner. Sorry to interrupt, Mr. Mayor. Um, given uh, Mayor Juan Ross' comments regarding uh, potential amendments and revisions to the county charter, um, I think it would be most efficient to bring back everything that would appear either on the August or November ballot so that we can see full picture of everything there. Um, and, uh, and I'm sorry again to interject. Thank you, Commissioner Weiss, for your comments. They were very personal and very meaningful. And I deeply appreciate you bringing this issue to the forefront in Palm Beach County. And if I may have a point of personal privilege, um, Mr. Mayor, we have Mayor Stephen Grant from the city of Boynton Beach. Thank you for being here today. Uh, the mayor may want to inquire as to whether you had any comments that you wanted to make. <laughs> Did you have any comments you wanted to make? We are also returning, I believe, at 2 o'clock for matters by the public. Uh, thank you, Commission. I, I, mayor Stephen B. Grant, for the record, um, I just want to say uh, for 2022 and after hearing what uh, Greg Weiss's uh, statement you know, I agree with that, you know, Palm Beach County is no place for hate and that we need to all work together uh, to make sure that love prevails throughout our county. Um, I want to thank the, the county for repaving the, the roads in Boynton Beach. Um, uh, Seacrest and Wilbright have recently been redone. Um, main thing that I want to hope for this, the future is bike lanes or wider sidewalks uh, because I want to make sure that everyone is safe wherever they go in Palm Beach County. Um, with that being said, I had a nice conversation with uh, Todd Von Laren at the Palm Trans Service Board trying to help end the digital divide uh, for prayer transit riders so that we are able to use the, the ad valorem property taxes uh, in the most effective way possible. From my knowledge, we're currently spending $30 million for Palm Trans Connection, which is actually going more total miles than our fixed route over 800,000 miles in uh, December versus 700,000 for our fixed route. So just give you guys an update on that. And thank you guys for pointing me to the position. I truly appreciate my time there. Thank you, Mayor. It's always great to see you. Commissioner McKinley. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. I hate to prolong your effort to recess the meeting, but I just want to compliment uh, Vice Mayor Weiss on his uh, very eloquent and poignant comments that he made and um, just say that uh, finger pointing on issues like this has no place in public service 
and the only thing it does is fuel the hate that is perpetuated by the type of people that showed up in Orlando. Uh, an issue like this is something where Republicans, Democrats, NPA, Green Party, I don't care what party you are, should be joining hands and uh, ostracizing those that are trying to deliver that kind of hate um, across this country, not just in Palm Beach County. And so, Commissioner Weiss, thank you, or Vice Mayor Weiss, um, thank you for speaking out on that. I support you. Thank you, Commissioner McKinley. Uh, we're going to recess until 2 p.m. I have a family matter I have to address, so I'm going to ask my vice mayor to convene at 2 o'clock. Thank you very much. We are recessed. <laughs>